the last 15 years, so a brief overview, and it will be very brief, it's literally one slide trying to sum up 15 years of work, so um, hopefully I'll, I'll do it justice. Um, five, the five year plan, so the next five years, where we kind of see it going short term, and then the longer term future, um, what we want to do. Next slide, Bill. So the last 15 years, so I'm, as Grant said earlier, or Dom said earlier actually, I'm going to be concentrating on the in-house research and technological development. So this, that's the stuff within house. So basically, how can we reduce the unit cost of production and how can we use techniques um, to develop operations and improve our production process so that we can improve our outputs. So the last 15 years have seen dark tree development. We've done, done a lot of work on the larval side of things and also on the juvenile side of things. We've moved away from using live feeds to a more stable uh, food, or hopefully more stable food. We've moved to, to frozen feeds as well as formulated feeds as well during the larval stages to try and stabilise production, um, which is, yeah, it's, it's improved it greatly. We've managed to kind of up production. I think we're at about kind of 30, 40% of the kind of usual nice level for, for larval survival at the moment. So, Diets have changed, um, we've assessed water quality. One of the biggest things um, I've seen throughout my time here has been up and down production. So stabilising production is a big thing. We've, we've seen production that's kind of gone high, gone low, and it's very difficult to kind of understand what's going on. But assessing water quality is one of the most important things. We are uh, placed right next to a boatyard, right next to a working harbour, it's not the ideal situation for the placement of a lobster hatchery, though it is the ideal situation for the placement of the lobster hatchery for the visitor centre, and that's what's kept the place going up until now. So what we need to do is think for the future, can we use the techniques we've developed to assess water quality to be able to understand can we get a better water quality for, for the animals. And um, myself and my team who's in the room have been developing a biological assay using um, the lobsters themselves to create a short-term assay that can be used to assess the water quality before it's then put into full-scale production. So it's minimising the risks. Um, culture techniques, we've assessed a lot of things over the years. We have actually trialled years and years ago a multi-stacking system, but unfortunately the Orkney hatchery got there before us. Um, so the aqua hive was invented, which is amazing. It's a brilliant multi-stacking system. Um, but we have done kind of developments on culture techniques throughout the, throughout the period that I've been here. Um, Sea-based container culture, this is more kind of in the last four years, we've been looking at the possibility for on-growing. So the idea behind this was could we create a transition step between the hatchery and the world to create more, well, potentially larger individuals, but potentially fitter individuals as well. So those individuals that you're going to be releasing out for stock enhancement purposes, can we make them healthier, stronger, for release back into the wild. So that's where the sea-based container culture work came in. We've also done stuff on release behaviour and release techniques as well. Charlie will recognise this box. Um, <laughs> that was something Charlie developed a very long time ago. Um, that was a method of getting the fishermen involved and keeping them involved. Because a lot of our releases have upscaled. We are releasing a lot larger numbers now, which is brilliant. But that does mean that we've moved away from releasing the fishermen. So things like this can actually keep us releasing with the fishermen. So it's a small scale release, but it actually keeps the fishermen on board, and that's very kind of important. Um, so I think that, that kind of sums up some of the work that we've done. It's very skimmed over, but kind of the next um, bit will hopefully show you what we're, what, what, what I feel actually we should do for the next five years. So I think. It's very important to improve the culture techniques and productions. We should stay down that line, um, but we should focus on two things. One of them being stabilising production through unknowns. Um, we all know that there's a lot of ups and downs in production, and certainly the European Lobster Centre of Excellence, who's a, a group of lobster nerds in Europe basically, they have decided in their strategy that stabilising production is one of the most important. So it's not just us here in Padstone, it's a lot of people that work with the three of the European jobs that have decided that this is, it's, it's a good idea, we need to stabilise production to move forward. Um, so there's three sections within that, that that I can kind of highlight. So there's, there's the brood side of things. Now that's one of the big unknowns. Um, obviously, 
we get females in from the world. They've um, mated in the world. They've matured their eggs in the world. So it's a big unknown when we get them. We don't know exactly what's going on. And at the, this moment in time, apart from kind of visual looking, we don't have any techniques to kind of say, yes, we should take that female, no, we shouldn't, based on, say, the quality of the larvae. So we could look at fatty acid levels, things like that, in the actual larvae themselves, or even the quality of the female. So I think we need to do a lot of research looking at the quality of the brood because that's obviously the input of our larvae and that will affect the survival of the larvae in the long term. Uh, water is a big thing as I mentioned, um, the positioning of the hatchery uh, for water quality isn't ideal if we can create some sort of system where we can reduce that unknown, so the bioassay system, so we're, we're testing small scale the quality of the water before it then goes forward into full scale production. And then the feeds. There's a lot more to be done on feeds. We have done a lot of work on feeds over the years, um, a good 10 years of research on feeds. But there's still a lot to be um, kind of yeah, discovered. And I think through stabilizing production by choosing a food source that is more reliable. So for example, it's a formulated feed, it's made in a lab, you know what formulation's in it, you know the quality of it, it comes out at a, at a certain standard. We need to kind of look at how we integrate these into our feeding routines full time. And then the next stream um, is the on growing and aquaculture. So, this is where the sea based container culture work comes in. Um, they actually link quite closely together. As I say, the initial idea was the on growing side of things. The aquaculture side of things has stemmed from our ability to rear lobsters to larger sizes in containers. Um, I don't know how many of you know uh, about Lobster Grow One, the project that, that's been going on. Uh, so that's due to finish in March next year, but that was looking at developing a system specifically designed for lobsters. These systems here were designed for rearing oyster spat, so they're not actually designed for lobsters. They work really well. We've managed to rear them through to about two and a half years almost now in these containers. Um, and they get to a decent size, kind of hand sized animals. So the idea of Lobster Grow One was to develop a system that was more specifically designed for lobsters and would actually be more viable. Uh, this system is a bit difficult to work. It's not really kind of viable on a boat to kind of take the internal lids off and separate the stacks and everything. It's, it wouldn't work for an aquaculture industry if we're looking to go large scale or even for on growing purposes if we're looking to do that larger scale with all of the animals that we're producing. Lobster Grow 2 is the next kind of step, so over the next five years the way I see it going is Lobster Grow 2 and then potentially Lobster Grow 3 as well. So the Lobster Grow 2 project is due to start in February um, of next year, which um, basically as an overview of Lobster Grow 2, we will be looking at setting up a pilot scale farm for lobsters. So testing the innovations that we've come up in with in Lobster Grow 1, actually physically testing them. Um, and through that we will be able to look at environmental aspects, we'll be able to look at economic aspects, aspects. So is it viable to put these out there? How much do you have to invest in the containers themselves? Um, how much do you have to invest in the lobsters? And then kind of the, the technological side of things. So is it viable um, to rear, say, for one year, for two years, for three years? What is the time period that it takes for these lobsters to, to reach a marketable size? Um, so as an overview, we're not necessarily looking at the market size at present. So the market size at present um, is a lot larger than what we potentially would be looking at. We're maybe looking at something that's more the size of Nephrox, um, so it's kind of a hand sized lobster. But it's a different market. It's not, the, it's not competing with the existing fishery. It would be creating a niche market that could then be taken forward. So Lobster Grow 2 would allow us to do that and the outcome of that would be an aquaeconomic model which is basically something that can be taken forward and given to someone who wants to invest in the industry and you say, okay, if you invest this much, your return will be this much. So that's the idea behind that. Uh, Lobster Grow 3 will be all about the commercialisation. Obviously we'll have to apply for funds for this project. We've got the funds for Lobster Grow 2, which is great, but Lobster Grow 3 is the next step we, we would have to look for. And that would be commercialising the industry, so trying to get people investing really, and setting up farms themselves. Uh, yeah, so sorry. That's right. <laughs> so although these seem like two very different streams, they are actually very interlinked. So without stabilising production, 
the potential supply for on growing or aquaculture isn't going to be there. So you need the two to work together to be able to, for, for both streams really to be forward. Yep. So the long term future. So myself and Don went to a very interesting meeting in London on Tuesday. And it was basically uh, BBSRC and NERC, um, who are the, the academic councils who hand out money to the academics, basically. They have uh, highlighted that the government strategy recognises the importance of agriculture. So there is funding out there for this work. Um, so the future, the way I see it, is we need to apply for the funding to, to keep this kind of work going. Um, there's many sources, uh, just a few highlighted there. Um, as well as providing us the ability to bring funds into the hatchery, which will not only kind of help the aquaculture side of things, but will actually improve the stock enhancement work through the, the work that we can do through these funds. The IP generated as part of Lobster Grow 1 and Lobster Grow 2 will help us to raise funds to support the charity's work. So the idea behind this was if we create some intellectual property, um, that can then be taken forward and used to raise funds for the charity's work. We're then supporting both streams of the charity's work, so the potential industry to the stream, which would be agriculture. I'm not saying that the hatchery is looking to run uh, a lobster farm, that's not the way we're looking at it, but there is potential that maybe we could generate revenue through the sale of juveniles to the agriculture industry, which is a, another nice little, um, nice little scheme. So, Developing techniques for the industry, obviously if you look at something like salmon farming, it's had years and years and years of um, developing techniques, getting things right, upscaling. We are starting off from scratch. It's a whole new industry. There's a lot of work to be put in, but the kind of things that we may be looking at in the future are potential breeding programs. Obviously, we wouldn't want to be relying, and we shouldn't be relying on natural stock. At the moment, our animals obviously come from the wild, they breed in the wild, we wouldn't want to be using those for agriculture, so we would need to have some sort of breed, breeding programme in place were this to, to kind of take off. Um, seeding, grading and harvesting, all the technologies involved in that, there's a lot to be kind of uh, discovered and looked at. Next slide. So, aquaculture, um, an industry reality? Something we don't know the answer to, something that Lobster Grow 2 will hopefully give us the answer to. 